Hi, my name is Jerome, and today we're gonna be talking about the evolution of the web. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about web 1.0, web 2.0, and web 3.0. The first generation of the web is called Web 1.0. Okay, so the websites built during this time was very, very simple. Okay, so mostly are text and if you see some images, it doesn't have yet a, a high resolution. So especially that during that time, uh, our internet speed is not as fast as what we have today. Okay, so the web 1.0 lasted from 1989 to 2005. It was considered a read-only website. Actually, it was known to be a static website. Okay, so static in a way where, you know, web masters or web developer, developers just uh, published their content online and users uh, just passively received information. Okay, there was no way to react or make uh, reviews and feedback, making some comments or reactions or writing your opinions about the post, just like what we have today. Yeah, it doesn't exist yet during the time. Yeah, things like uh, liking features like what we have in YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or putting some uh, reactions. Yeah, it, uh, it was not a feature yet during uh, during the time of web 1.0 okay so the interaction between the websites and the users were very very limited okay so uh, again now uh, during the web 1.0 users doesn't have the opportunity to uh, make some comments reactions or any kind of feedback now let's move on to web 2.0 or the dynamic websites okay so what do we mean by that so unlike web 1.0 web 2.0 now allow users to be able to respond to the website okay that is why it is dynamic so uh, if, if for example a reader uh, for a certain blog uh, has an opinion about it he, he or she can write some comments right on the page. Uh, so users now are able to make their own post within the page, not just comments. In fact, users who are able to uh, make an entire page, okay? Uh, this happens through blogging platforms. Web 2.0 is the second phase of web development. Uh, uh, users are now able to interact not only on the website but also the I mean there was also an interaction among users okay so the web 2.0 facilitated the sharing of contents this feature flooded the World Wide Web with all types of contents on uh, almost any subject matter uh, that we know okay so web 2.0 was a huge explosion almost any content that you wanted to search from the internet is already available from various sources okay you know things like fashion food travel cooking music lifestyle fitness and health online courses history politics you name it so the web is dominating when it comes to content All right, a few examples of Web 2.0 are Facebook, Wikipedia, Twitter, WordPress, Instagram, and so on, okay? Almost all websites that you see today on the internet are product of Web 2.0. Users are now more involved to information being published in the internet. Unlike Web 1.0, the type of data that can be published in Web 2.0 is more robust. Okay, not only text and images, but also large files such as videos can now easily be shared and circulated worldwide. All right, so now let's move on to Web 3.0. You might have noticed that in your smartphone, Facebook is notifying you that somebody posted a photo that might include you or you know some apps in your smartphone are aware of your current location okay you know the uh, gps app or even the 
uh, uh, Google Map is actually tracking your uh, location real time, okay, while you're driving the car. And the web will now, in Web 3.0, the web will now process data and information based on the needs of users, okay? Uh, in Web 2.0, users must explicitly look for the information that they're trying to search all right they, they need to put some key uh, a, a very, they need to put a very accurate keywords in order to be able to search the information that they're looking for okay but uh, the web but web 2.0 doesn't care why you are searching for that information or why you are buying a certain product online but in web 3.0 it's different Okay, the web now cares about the information that you're trying to search. The web 3.0 now cares about the product you purchase online. What information you normally seek? How often do you seek for a particular information? It can anticipate what products or information you might need in the future. Okay, it knows your location. It's, it is aware about your online behavioral pattern and you know processing all this information in order for the computer to be able to make some suggestions for you. All right, so let's take a look with this example uh, from expertssystem.com. In Web 3.0, while you are driving a car, you can simply ask I would like to watch a romantic movie and eat Japanese food. Okay, so the search engine embedded in the car assistant provides you with a personalized response that takes into account your location, suggesting the closest cinema that matches your request, and a good Japanese restaurant by automatically consulting the reviews on social media. Then it might even present a 3D menu from the restaurant in the display. If you will notice, Web 3.0 is now personalized because the web now analyzes your behavioral pattern online. Okay, it, it will try to anticipate your needs. Uh, it takes into account your location, your behavioral pattern, your preferred products and services, and those things that you prefer will be on top of the list. So unlike Web 2.0, uh, the Things that are on top of your search result are basically the things that are most searched by most users on the internet. Web 3.0 is characterized by machine learning, automation, and artificial intelligence. Okay, I hope you have learned something today. Thank you for watching.